Recently, we celebrated the 100th anniversary of Charlotte Mason's legacy. It is true that she lived in the Victorian era. And sometimes when we think about Charlotte Mason and her methods, we get this mental picture of everyone sitting in the little drawing room, very prim and proper in their hoop skirts or whatever fashion they were wearing at the time, having their tea and everything's very quiet and subdued. That picture doesn't really mesh very well with some of our kids. Is that an accurate picture of the Charlotte Mason method? Let's discuss it. Welcome to the Simply Charlotte Mason podcast. I'm Sonia Schaefer. Joining me today is my friend and coworker, Karen Smith. Karen, we're going to talk about is Charlotte Mason's approach to education quiet and subdued and prim and proper? I know that's you in a nutshell. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was the sarcastic font there. Yes. Yes, maybe quiet, but not prim and proper and subdued. No. Okay. <laughs> And with your boys that you raised, and even with your daughter, they are not prim, proper, subdued, you know. We didn't do tea parties. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Neither did we. So, so let's just talk a little bit about that mental picture and how Charlotte Mason's method is a good fit for a boisterous household even. Yes. <laughs> there, I think there are... Even some of the subjects across the subjects, there are things that are not just prim and proper that you may be doing. Take music, for example. Some of the composers had very lively music. Oh, that's true. That's true. Um, when you think music study, you think everyone's sitting in their little seats listening to the, the recording, and the that's all. The quiet classical music. And... Yeah, but it's not all the quiet, you know, Moonlight Sonata. No. You've got the 1812 Overture. You've got, you've got lots of bombastic pieces. Yes. I mean, Beethoven was known for his wide range of dynamics and being so far out there from what used to be pr considered proper music. Yes. So, yeah. And so, I mean, those children who are active and boisterous, you can put the 1812 Overture on. Let them listen to it and let them be active and move to it. Yes. They don't have to sit prim and proper to listen to that. I mean, if you but, want to shoot off the cannons, it's strictly up to you. If you happen to have one in your living room, maybe or your maybe you made a potato cannon or something. Oh, now you know? you're talking. See? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. But how about poetry? Yes, you often think of poetry as this is tea time. Yes. We're going to it, sip our tea and read our sweet little poems about flowers. And Robert Louis Stevenson. Yes. About childhood. Nice, sweet. calm poems, sweet, yes. that sort of a thing. But what about Longfellow? He's got some great long stories that are powerful stories. Yes. You know, the Wreck of the Hesperus. That's yes. not what you'd call prim and proper and sweet. No, it has adventure. It has yeah. intrigue. I mean, yeah. there's there's so much going on in it that it's not, let's sit, sit quietly and listen to it. So, so much going on with and, that. And as the children absorb and form relations with these poems and music and other things we're gonna talk about. One thing Charlotte said is you know they've got it if they start using it in their play. Yes. You're going to see them acting out whatever that was. You know, maybe they're gonna shoot off their cannons in their play time. Oh, yes. So their play time is not gonna be quiet and subdued and that's a direct result of what they learned in their school time. Because it fires their imagination. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And we're not saying that school time should be chaos. No, no, not at all. But that it's not just everybody sit here in your seats, don't move. Children should be seen and not heard. No, it's you know, not definitely that. Definitely not that. <laughs> <laughs> what other school subjects come to mind? Picture study. Mm. Some artists do have paintings that are flowers, nice serene landscapes, Monet. that sort of mm -hmm, a thing. Mm -hmm. But others have ones that have, um, I think of Winslow Homer. Yes, yeah. Many of his paintings, there is an angry sea in the background oh, yeah. or things that are happening that are high adventure. Yeah, he's got the pictures of the women in hoop skirts playing croquet. But then most of his pictures, I right now I'm picturing the one of where they were rescuing someone from yes. a shipwreck. 
And, the, and you've got that swing that... On yes, the, they're crossing on that cable. Yes. Yes. And the storm is raging around mm -hmm. them. I mean, that is high adventure. But even, even Crack the Whip. Oh, yes. That one with the children playing a game. Yeah. I mean, it's obvious that those children are not being gentle with each other. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> Just in that still shot of the painting that he has. And Charlotte would approve, I mean, if we have to have this approval, you know, but she would approve of what's going on in Crack the Whip because I remember that passage where she talks about we want our children to have strong muscles and strong lungs and strong hearts, but to do that, they've got to go outside and use them. Yes. And so they've got to use their voices, fill up their lungs, yell and scream and run about. And be you know? children. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Um, history. Mm. History is full of wars. And yeah. we can't turn a blind eye to those because the wars are what shape our world. Mm. So there's wars. There's, um, there's spies. Those True. are, you know... Not prim and proper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exploring, um, interactions, tensions. Yes. That maybe did not um, explode into a war, but there were tensions there. Yes. It's, history is not prim and proper. No, not at all. Taken as a whole, it is not. Not at all. And maybe your children are sitting and listening. Others are going to be pacing and listening. That's fine, as long as they're listening. But the ideas they are getting are not all prim and proper ideas. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, the other subject that I think of is science. Mm -hmm. Science is where your children can, you know, get down and get dirty. Okay, I'm thinking nature study. We have to be quiet so we don't scare the animals away. You can be quiet, but there are other aspects of nature study that involve things that Otherwise, we don't think of as prim and proper. Mm. You can observe live worms, slugs, centipedes, other insects. You can find out what happens when you mix water with dirt. <laughs> yes. You know, that makes, that makes mud. Um, something that might be a little bit more prim and proper, but is fun, especially for adventurous children, is to make rainbows with, with a garden hose. Oh, where yeah. they have to spray it. So, you know, that spray can be a fun thing and might turn into more than what mom thought for the lesson. But then they're getting their <laughs> exercise and using those muscles and those and lungs, Having fun you know? and making memories. Yes, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Some um, experiments that they might do when they are older, let's say high school, middle school age, they might um, do experiments where they are burning iron. Oh, wow. Um, okay, I don't picture that as happening in a parlor at a tea party, you know? No. That is, yeah, that's heavy-duty stuff there, burning um, iron. Where they, might, where they might be doing some um, electroplating mm. with their experiments or culturing bacteria so they can see, you know, what places really are clean or not clean, those types of things. Or taking a chicken bone and um, making it rubbery. <laughs> with, with their experiment. So there, you know, there are all sorts of things that they can do. That reminds me of handicrafts, too. You think of, you know, knitting or crocheting mm -hmm. or embroidery, but there's also ironworking and woodworking, woodworking and, and leather and tooling and many things that... Working with, with the rope coiling. Yes, yes. And that you, you don't think of an equation with tea time in the parlor. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yes. So many things... And there's also the free time that the children have because their lessons are short and don't take their whole day that they can explore some of those things that interest them that might be on that loud and boisterous side. Yes. And maybe it's making um, different contraptions. Maybe your children, you, maybe you're studying the Middle Ages and your children really want to make a trebuchet. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's yeah. something they can experiment with. Yes. In their, in their own free time if you don't want to put that as part of your lessons. And I think Charlotte protected that aspect of childhood um, because she was careful not to give homework. She was careful to protect those afternoon occupations yes. where the children could explore, still be productive, but explore their own interests. And absolutely, if their interests are loud and boisterous, let them go. Yeah. 
Yes, let them explore. Let them be. Let them be who they are. Yeah. As persons, and you never know what that might produce in your child, how that might come about. So. I'm thinking of comparing Charlotte Mason with other approaches, and really, Charlotte Mason allows the child to be himself, to have the freedom to be boisterous and uproarious at the proper time. Yes, because there are times when they need to be disciplined Yes, and pay attention and sit for that lesson for math or reading. But the lesson is going to be short. Yes. Many other approaches, they're expecting that child to sit all day long because the lessons go, you know, even in a classroom, they often go from morning till late afternoon. With and small breaks in between, but not... Yeah, uh, not allowing the child Not allowing to, the child to really run and play and explore his world. Yes, and to act out what he has been learning. Yes. To, to um, who was it? Was it Longfellow who talked about laying siege to the armchair? They would lay siege, they'd pretend that was the castle. And, you know, sieges... Are, are not quiet things. They're not prim and proper no. thing. A laying siege to something is is a pretty heavy duty, loud thing yes. <laughs> when your army is yes, coming. Yes, it is. So, yeah, I think the Charlotte Mason approach needs to be set free from this mental image too many people have. Yes, I think so too. It's not a prim and proper sit in your seats, drink tea, and ooh and ah over flowers every day type of approach. And we're so glad it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> now there are there are quiet things involved because oh, yes. we give them a wide variety. That's the thing. It's not all loud. It's not all quiet, just as life is not all loud yes. and all quiet. There's a balance yes. between those. And learning to recognize when each of those is appropriate is part of growing. Yes, it is for the parent and for the child. Mm -hmm. But not frustrating the child is a huge part of it. So those short lessons, paying full attention, but giving them a wide variety, it's not just giving them prim and proper flowers and daisies and, and soft music. Giving them the whole variety and letting them have time to be children, to act out what they're learning, and to make those potato cannons. I have to tell you this. My chiropractor told me recently they have a Christmas tradition at their house that when they come up to Christmas, they make the gingerbread houses. The kids all make their gingerbread houses, and then they let them sit there until New Year's. And on New Year's, they take them out in the middle of the street and they blow them up. That is not prim and proper. <laughs> but doesn't it sound like fun? Yes, it does. <laughs> it would be great to... To have that as just family memories right there. Yes. Part, and they're learning a lot from watching all of that and doing all oh, of that. Oh, yes. So I think, I think Charlotte would have approved of those types of fun family times together. Yes. It doesn't have to all be sit in the parlor. And besides, I don't drink tea, so... Me neither. Okay, but don't tell anybody. We'd have to turn in our Charlotte Mason cards. <laughs> Thanks. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe through iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.